eventually we, we tried, uh, we got a distributor in order to try to, to help with that problem. Right. Uh, since where we were, we couldn't really sustain on a taproom model because our taproom was way too small and uh, not in a convenient spot. So we really had to use distribution as our, as our main driver. And uh, our distributor was not very uh, helpful to mm. us at all. And of course, the laws in Texas are once you sign, it's very difficult to unsign. Um, and that, that kind of strengthened us. Yeah. So that, among a, a you know, handful of other things, we ended up getting to the point where it just didn't make sense to continue okay. uh, with Rabbit Hole. Made the difficult decision to close. And then uh, that was in 2019, we closed it. In 2020, uh, February, I was auctioning off all of the equipment. Okay. February of 2020. Wow. And then, I was, oh, and then no. in March of 2020, <laughs> I was thanking the gods that I had done it in February and not March. Of course, yeah. Because uh, if that auction had hit a month later, I, you still would have been I would have been, well, part of it would have given it away. Oh, that's it, yeah. Uh, you know, that's the way auctions work. Um, and so thankfully, we were able to, to get out. It was painful, but it, it could have been much worse. Uh, and then it was about that time that the folks that, that were opening this uh, business park here, mm -hmm. uh, the Daltex uh, over there is the, the uh, main company okay. uh, that they're running from here. But they wanted, they wanted this building as well, and they wanted to put a brewery here. And so they approached us. Originally, they wanted to buy Rabbit Hole and move it. We tried to make that happen, but for reasons, it, it didn't work out. Okay. Uh, and so, okay, well, great. Now I'm not doing anything. So Sure, I'll help you build a brewery. Why not? What, what else? What else do I do? Sure. Um, so my plan in March of 2020 was to basically work from home for the next year and do consulting work for people. And little did I know that that's what the entire rest of the planet would be doing. Sure. Yeah. That was my plan. Yeah. Um, and so it you know kind of worked out well in that regard. Um, unfortunately, though, that we had an 18 month time frame from uh, after. Well, you know, setting up and planning what the brewery is going to be mm -hmm. in order to get it constructed and, and built and open. And then a global pandemic happens and yep. then a worldwide uh, material shortage. And, yeah. And it was, it took two years just to get all the permits through the city so we could start construction. See, that one never made any sense to me because I've heard that from multiple other people that it was holdups, processing paperwork to the city. Mm -hmm. They do it on a regular basis anyway. Most yeah. of the time they're either, either in an office or from home. Mm -hmm. The fact that they just sat on so much stuff for that long never made any sense to me because you're doing yeah. your job anyway, but you're doing it from home. Why is this process? Well, they, except that, first of all, they weren't. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was, I think that was the large part of it. So normally what happens with when you're dealing with a city like that is if things are stalled or if you're trying to find out what the status is, mm -hmm. you either call them or you go visit in person. Yeah. Well, you couldn't visit in person because nobody was there. You couldn't call them because they're not at their desk. Right. They're, you know, there's, there's no, the only access you have is by phone. Yeah. And there was a lot of turnover at that time as well. Mm. So the, the city lost a lot of people and we're trying to rehire them. And, yeah, and they were working from home, but they, you know, they couldn't really be trained because yeah. they, they were working from home. Yeah, how are you training um, somebody? Zoom or whatever. Right, yeah. and so you know, everything else is going on, and they're trying to tend to their sick relatives or, or whatever it is. Uh, and so, consequently, just a lot of work didn't get done. Got, yeah, a lot of stuff was going to fall And, and we didn't have the ability to follow up with any of it. We didn't know okay. who was on our on our program or who was doing it for us. And yeah. even if we did, we couldn't get in touch with them because we didn't know where they lived. Sure. Yeah. 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 yeah you're so, going to show up to somebody's house, like, hey, is my right. paperwork process. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so it wasn't really until the uh, people started coming back to the office mm. that we could really start getting some motion again. It, it was just a slow, slow slog to see any progress at all during that time. Gotcha. Case. Okay. That makes more sense. Cause that's, uh, I never heard it from that side that, you know, again, the, the turnover is so high and of course things are going to fall to the crack when you do have so many people turning over because let's say they just quit or whatever, no. they're not going to tell the next person, hey, don't forget this, you know, <laughs> yeah. This, yeah, where this is, this you know, project is on their desk. Right. That's amazing. Well, so it, two years later, mm -hmm. you guys are finally opened up. Yeah. How, I mean, I was here opening day, you guys were packed, which yeah. I thought was amazing. Um, how did the first, I mean, we're now in almost September. How's the first six months been for you? Uh, pretty good. Yeah. I mean, really, we are, um, our, it's divided between outside sales and, and tap room. Outside sales, I'd like them to be a little bit uh, more robust than they are, of course, but we're making some really good progress now. Right. Uh, 
I think the cans that we've got coming out are going to help a lot. We're, we're just starting to do uh, beer in, in cans for package retail sales. That's awesome. So I think that's going to help a lot. Uh, tap room has been great. Yeah, uh, I tap, imagine. Tap, tap room has been very robust, especially on the weekends. We've got uh, usually a pretty robust crowd. And of course, we've got a really nice big venue, too. Oh, this venue's huge. Now, it's massive. We can, uh, I think full, full occupancy is about 325. Jeez. Um, that's just you know cramming them in there, yeah. but but on a given weekend we might have two hundred odd at a time right. here, and it doesn't really feel that crowded because it's big enough. Yeah, yeah, you have uh, two floors, and the, the top floor overlooks the bottom floor, and the brewery, which is right. amazing. Yeah. So so in that regard, it's been really great. It, it also helps that we've got twenty taps, yeah. and we're doing our darndest to make sure that they are. It's a it's a very broad selection of yeah. beer. So when people come here. It doesn't matter what you're looking for. It doesn't matter what kind of beer you like. We have something that will fit your style. That's awesome. Not all of the beers are going to be for everybody because not everybody likes everything. Not every beer is for everybody anyway. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know, precisely right. So I want to make sure that no matter who you are, what you like, it's, it's not a, a tap wall of 20 beers and 17 of them are IPAs because <laughs> I really like super hoppy beers. It's like, well, okay, well, that's great if you're hot, then, but if you're not, then what? Yes. Uh, so, so that's not what we're what we're about. The uh, new operations that we've got going on is to try to expand that even further. Oh, okay. I mean, it, no, no matter how many different kinds of beer I make, there are people who just aren't going to be into beer at all. Sure. Okay, well, what are you into? Wine? Spirits? Cocktails? Seltzers? What? I mean, yeah. I, if we can do it, we'll do it. Of course. Uh, we are, are trying to expand just you know, beyond just being a craft brewery into a craft beverage company. That's awesome. That does... You know, it does a, a whole broad range of things to make sure that we can capture the, the broadest possible uh, interest level from people who are looking for something a little different. Right. Now, here in Texas, we are having more breweries that are opening their own spirits and, you know, working on that aspect of it as well. Do, I mean, you guys aren't even a year in, but looking down the road, does that look like something you guys would be open to doing as well? Because you just said you guys are looking to be a beverage company in general. So Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, we, yeah, we've yeah, we got, uh, we actually were in the process of putting in our still. Okay. Uh, so we have a still going in. We've got, uh, I'm working on the all the paperwork and the, and the uh, permits and everything that are necessary mm -hmm. in order to operate a brewery and a distillery on the same premise. Very nice. Which is, it, it, it's more complicated than it needs to be, but it can be done. That's Texas. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> Texas, exactly. Uh, so we're doing that. Okay. Uh, and hoping to kind of spin that into a line of ready-to-drink cocktails. That so market is right. gigantic mm -hmm. and it is not getting any smaller. Yeah, so we're going to push on that. Uh, I'm sure we will have bottled spirits, you know, bourbon, whiskey, uh, probably gin, yeah, gin rum. Vodka, yeah, uh, it's going to take a few years before that's really thoroughly ready. We're going to be making those for our cocktails at first. Oh, of course. And then um, a little bit later we may start releasing them on their own. But, um, I mean, it takes three years to make up bourbon, so yeah. that's, i gotta got to wait. <laughs> oh, shucks, you know. Yeah. Be here a little longer. Mm. <laughs> well, you guys have food here as well. How did, or what are the choices when it does come to making the menu and how often is the menu changing? Mm -hmm. So the, the food is really important because it gives people another reason to come and another reason to stay. Right. Uh, there's a lot of breweries out there, but if you don't have food, then it's like, okay, well now I gotta leave so I can go eat dinner or yeah. lunch or whatever. The uh, kitchen that we have, uh, we don't run it. It's actually run by Azora's Craft Sausages. Okay. Uh, so that that's the, the kitchen partner that we have. That uh, And Chef Roger is the one that runs it. Right. And he, uh, he essentially sets the menu based on, you know, it's, it's his restaurant, uh, he's, he's leasing space from us, but it's based on our beers and our clientele and such. He's not, you know, it wouldn't make sense to open something that clashes with, with the beer. Yeah. Um, it focuses on craft sausages and pizzas. He's got a really nice pizza oven. Oh, yeah. He does an excellent uh, pizza, just you know, Neapolitan style uh, uh, pizzas. Mm -hmm. And, and then also he makes his own sausages. He's got uh, really good burgers, sandwiches, um, that, that lineup. Yeah. So those things are pretty much static. Those, those stay on the menu the whole time. And then he has a lot of things that he'll kind of release from time to time 
uh, like Valentine's Day, he'll do a special meal, or uh, he did one on Mother's Day, I think, uh, or Father's Day, or maybe both. I don't, I can't recall. Yeah. But uh, certain holidays, they'll come up with a special menu that's a little bit expanded. Right. They'll have soup for the day, which could be you know just different things depending on what he's found that, that uh, he wants to to try and offer. So awesome. while the pizzas are always there and the sandwiches are always there. There's always something new that he's introducing as well, just that's to keep it new and original and interesting. I mean, as you should. I mean, you guys are not going to make the exact same beers all the time. Why would he make the exact same food all the time? So that's right. Yeah, exactly. And you can also pairings go great together as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, you guys, you're not new to the beer scene here in the Metroplex, and the Metroplex is not getting smaller size-wise or brewery size wise either no. i mean we're at least up to 80 something at this point uh it's, it depends on how you count them but in some in some counts it's over 100. wow yeah. i have not seen that number yet yeah it depends on if you just look at licenses oh okay but, but some of the licenses are oh they're actually brewing or do they just have a brewery license okay yeah like a bj's or something like that right, yeah. yeah okay well so who are some breweries that kind of helped you when you were initially starting with rabbit hole and then when you moved over here uh, other breweries? Yeah. Uh, we were, uh, well, I know um, Martin House was opening right before we were, mm-hmm. and I knew Cody pretty well. We, we uh, got along pretty well in the early days. We were you know, both opening up at the same time. Um, and back when Shannon was operating, they were the, the geographically closest one. There was a few times where I would have to run over there. Oh, crap, we're, we're short a bag of Pilsner. <laughs> yeah, I can borrow one. And then uh, there were other times where he'd come get a bag of hops from me for the same reason, just because right. you know, it was uh, it was a convenient way of, of saving the brew day, and we were you know, helping each other out in there, that regard. Um, uh, in in actual material assistance, that was uh, key. We also got involved with the Brewers Guild, okay. uh, Texas Brew, Craft Brewers Guild, uh, pretty early on, right. and tried to go to as many of the events. At, at different breweries as possible. And in that regard, uh, we're able to get tips and tricks from quite a few of them. That's awesome. Uh, just in terms of, oh, that's a neat little piece of equipment you got there. Tell me about that. Yeah. And, and just discovering things that other breweries were doing. Right. Um, I know I, I uh, spoke a lot with uh, Sean over at Cowtown mm. uh, as he was getting started. And um, some of the ones in Dallas, too, actually. I, uh, I got to know. Jamie Fulton pretty well, and uh, Wim Benz uh, over at Lakewood yeah. has been uh, really good to a lot of us, uh, just in terms of his expertise and, and uh, willingness to suggest and help. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's also fun to see how other people are doing things, because everybody's got different size breweries, everybody's got different tanks. Yes, mm-hmm. we're all roughly doing the same thing, but how you're doing it's not going to be the exact same way as somebody else is going to do it. Well, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So, going from a smaller space like you were into this massive space you have now, how much, not more freeing is it, but like how much more creativity are you seeing or engineer wise, like how much more uh, you know, tech can you put in here? Uh, I mean, pr- probably similar to the jump in scale from my garage to rabbit. <laughs> <You know? laughs> that was a huge jump too. Uh, you know, just orders of magnitude. And then this is again, orders of magnitude yeah. from what we had. Uh, the ability to do some of the, I mean, to actually have a lab yeah. and do cell counts, to have a, a centrifuge that allows us to uh, to more efficiently clarify our beer without having to go through the filtration process. Okay. And it, it clarifies it without removing things I don't want removed, right. you know, essentially. Um, it is very helpful to have that. It's also helpful to just have um, some of the automation Mm-hmm. that we didn't have before. Uh, it just, it, it automates the, the slow and redundant parts and makes it um, easier to innovate because you're not just exhausted from the physical labor of just doing the work. <laughs> um, you know, have, having it, okay, I, I need to, instead of having to monitor a valve for 30 minutes while I'm, I'm, I'm uh, loading out or, um, uh, collecting the, the work into the fermenter, right. we've got automation for that. You just push a button and it, you, you 
get it to where you want it, and then the computer kind of takes over and just maintains what you've set up. Nice. And I, I don't. Think